Philip Overton Elementary. Uh, I am speaking to you from uh, our ranch, which is in Roberts County, about four hours drive north of Overton Amarillo, uh, Overton Elementary in Lubbock, and uh, and about 40 miles south of Perryton, which is the town where I grew up. And uh, <clears throat> I am in the library of a house that we moved into in July to uh, replace the house that we lost in the wildfires of 2017. <clears throat> you might've read about that. It was at this, around this time of year, March the 6th, when there was, uh, <clears throat> There were three huge wildfires <clears throat> on the same day that burned over a million acres of land and our ranch was in the path of one of them. So we're moved back into our house now and uh, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the Ranch Life Series and then uh, I'm gonna leave a lot of time for y'all to ask questions. <clears throat> So uh, we'll be talking mainly about this uh, fourth book. Uh, the first book in this series uh, was about ranching versus farming and, uh, and livestock, different breeds of cattle. And the second book was on the tools and skills of the cowboy one of the main one of which is the horse and uh i uh i worked seven seven years that's how i made my living as a cowboy and uh i was i think pretty good at it in in my prime and uh good enough so that several ranchers paid me and that's how i made my living and supported my family the third book in the series is on ranch wildlife. And in that book, I talk about the animals that I see out here on our ranch and a few that we don't have, but <clears throat> uh, such things as badgers and coyotes and <clears throat> oh, buzzards and hawks and quail and doves and wild turkeys and so forth. A lot of those animals come up in the Hank books and uh, so the fourth book is on ranch weather. And you might wonder why, why that subject would de deserve a, um, a whole book to itself. And uh, the reason is that, that ranch life, ranchers and cowboys and, and their families are more exposed to weather than most people are. People who live in towns and cities uh, have a certain immunity to weather because a lot of them work inside and, and they will say, uh, get into their car in the garage in the morning and don't even have to scrape a windshield. And they drive out and uh, go to the school or the place where they work get out of the car and go inside and so they're they're going from one protected environment into another and of course that is not possible in the in the ranching business we're exposed to weather uh, every day and we live in a place that has very interesting weather uh, Lubbock and and Perryton are both on, uh, well, you're on the Llano Estacado, and we're a little bit north of that in what you might call the Southern Plains, but they're both flat country. And <clears throat> we, have, uh, we have severe winters and we can have pretty severe summers too. Uh, so it's natural that when I write a Hank book, uh, one of the major characters that uh, doesn't have a name is, is the weather. And uh, 
So in a book, for instance, uh, Lost in the Blinded Blizzard, in that story, Hank gets lost in the blizzard and uh, gets captured by Rip and Snort the Coyote Brothers. In uh, the case of uh, The Blazing Sky, that's a story about a prairie fire that start, started by lightning. That's, that's part of weather. Uh, the swirling killer tornado, in that story, Hank and Drover get swept up in a tornado. And uh, <clears throat> you could go on and on listing uh, Hank books that uh, probably began with uh, some kind of weather event that gave me the idea for the story. Uh, I write two Hank books a year. And uh, a lot of times, well, most of the time, I don't know where Hank's story is gonna go. I don't start off with an outline <clears throat> or a firm idea of where the story is going because if I do, then there's no point in writing the story. Part of the fun for me is figuring out what, what Hank and Drover are gonna do faced with a certain situation. <clears throat> so whether a lot of times that's where I start a story with what I see outside the window of my office on the ranch. And uh, to give you an idea of what that could be, you know, February was a very turbulent, uh, month for us, uh, for you all as well as us. Um, in that month, we had uh, severe weather alerts for thunderstorms, hailstorms, tornadoes, okay. wildfires, a blizzard warning, and a an Arctic cold front. You remember that Arctic cold front? Yeah. 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 Well, our temperature for two days for at, at nighttime temperature, our temperature was thir uh, 15 below zero and the wind was blowing. So the wind chill factor, which is the most important one, the wind chill factor was 30 degrees below zero. And <clears throat> in that uh, kind of weather, uh, the biggest challenge for a rancher, for me, was making sure that I could get feed to the cattle because in that cold weather, particularly when there's snow on the ground covering the grass, cattle need a source of protein to keep their body heat up. <clears throat> and uh, if they don't get it, they get weak and thin and they can die from the cold. The second thing they have to have is fresh water. You know what happens to water when it's 30 degrees below zero? It, it freezes. And <clears throat> the second or third day <clears throat> of that, that cold spell, my son Mark came up from Amarillo to help me because uh, just feeding cattle was difficult. It was also dangerous because machinery tends to stop working when it's when it's that cold. Tires can blow out, uh, motors can stop working, wheel bearings can freeze up. And if you if I'm out there by myself feeding cattle two miles from the house and my pickup quits on me, I don't want to call Chris and have her come out and find me. So I'd probably try to walk back to the house. And uh, that's not a smart thing to do when it's that cold. So my son, Mark, came and we fed with two pickups so that if, if one quit working, we would have the other one to get back home in. <clears throat> the next problem was, was uh, chopping the ice. And it got so thick, it was uh, 12 inches thick. And that's... You know, you try to chop a hole in the ice and it's so, it's so thick that you can't, you can't get to the water. So what we did 
we used a chainsaw to cut the ice into blocks and then scooped them out with a shovel. And uh, in that way, we were able to get fresh water for the cattle. Now we had to feed them right next to the stock tank because that, I, that water froze so fast. They had only five minutes to stick their noses in that and get a drink before it closed up again. So it was a real difficult time for me. And I just finished writing a Hank book that I started right after that. And I knew that that was what I was gonna write about this terrible cold event. So cold, it's the worst cold spell that I, I can remember. <clears throat> and uh, so that became a natural subject for a Hank story. And uh, it, it includes a lot of things that happened to me and Mark when we were trying to uh, get feed and water to our cattle. And I think it's gonna make an interesting story. And of course, with Hank and Drover around, it's gonna be funny too. Okay, well, <clears throat> I've had my 15 minutes to talk. <clears throat> and uh, so let's start on questions from you all. I don't remember, I'm thinking, do you want them to come stand in a certain spot? Okay, so for as long as I As long as I can hear them, uh, that, that won't be necessary. Okay. Aubrey, any questions? What? What breed is Hank? What breed is Hank? Well, he tells us that he's a top of the line blue ribbon cow dog. But uh, if you look at the drawings, he doesn't look like a top of the line blue ribbon cow dog. He looks like a mutt. <laughs> and so I think my interpretation is that, that Hank is a mutt who wants you to believe that he's he's some kind of blue blood cow dog? Okay. Ready? 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 Is Hank a dog? Yes. Are you going to make more books? Are you going to make more books? Would you read them if I'm if I wrote more books? Yes. You promise? Yes. Okay, then I will. And uh, I can tell you, uh, I finished this this Hank book just the other day. I think it's going to be called the case of the incredible ice event, <clears throat> and it will go in. <clears throat> into my uh, file of unpublished Hank books. It'll be, I have seven Hank books that are finished and it have not been published. So we know that uh, we're gonna have at least 82 Hank books or 83 Hank books, I believe. Wow. And <clears throat> so uh, you got a lot of, of reading ahead of you. And uh, in, in six months or so, probably in the fall, I will start another Hank book and I'll start with that, that famous sentence that you read, it's me again, Hank the cow dog. And then I will go on and figure out what Hank's getting into in the next book. Oh, okay, next question. Have you ever experienced a real tornado? Have I ever experienced a real tornado? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you know, I've never been in one. <clears throat> uh, I guess when I was a kid, um, I was at a Boy Scout meeting when a tornado, I was at the school in Perryton and a tornado went pretty close and hit the football stadium <clears throat> and uh, and several people were killed in that tornado, but I didn't actually see it. It was after dark and I was in the gymnasium. Uh, so I was in, in Lubbock. Uh, 
I know you all don't remember the big tornado that hit Lubbock. Uh, oh, it was decades ago in the 70s, I think. I was in Lubbock right, right after that tornado uh, went through there. And boy, it was, uh, it was really caused a lot of damage. <clears throat> we live in a canyon <clears throat> and I've been told by old timers that a tornado has never uh, hit these canyons in the Canadian River Valley. They'll go right over the top of them. <clears throat> and uh, so we, we may be safe where we live. Uh, I hope we don't ever have to find out for sure. Adrian, you're next. Um, have you, what, what is the worst weather that you experienced on the ranch? <clears throat> well, I, <clears throat> Uh, of course, we went through a drought in uh, 2011 through 2014, which was, uh, that was three years. That's the long, that's the longest bad weather I ever went through. And it was, it was very uh, disheartening to see this ranch uh, when it was uh, in such a sad condition and uh, you know uh, the, a lot of the birds left uh, wild turkeys left and haven't really come back since then so that was very difficult uh, the wildfires of 2017 <coughs> were uh, extremely destructive we lost about 90 percent of the grass on this ranch and of course our house and my writing office, we lost a dog and a horse and, and uh, a few head of cattle. I don't know how any of the cattle survived. It was, uh, it was a very bad storm. And, and uh, <coughs> we've had <coughs> uh, some deep snows that uh, made it hard for us to get around. But I think that this ice storm that we had and you all had, was one of the scariest weather events that we've had because uh, even though living on a ranch, we are pretty well prepared to survive on our own. We have a, we have a diesel generator as backup for electricity if it goes out. But you know, when it's 30 below zero, diesel generators don't want to start. It's hard to get any, any kind of a diesel engine to start. And uh, so that was pretty scary. Uh, okay, next question. When did you start making books? When did you start writing? Well, <clears throat> I didn't write anything when I was your age. And uh, we didn't know that kids in Lubbock and Perryton and Amarillo could dream of being a writer because uh, nobody had ever done that before. And uh, <clears throat> so my teachers, uh, we didn't do creative writing when I was in elementary and junior high school and high school. We did um, a lot of grammar and sentence diagramming and I got a very good background in the fundamentals of, of the English language, which is very important, but we didn't do any creative writing until I was a senior in high school. And uh, my English teacher made us write an original poem, which none of us thought we could do, but I was surprised to find that it was easy for me. And she gushed over it and said that it was beautiful and Oh, that's so nice. Will you write me another one? <laughs> her, her name was Mrs. Love. And how do you say no to Mrs. Love? So I started, I started writing poems for Mrs. Love and, uh, and I enjoyed it and when I went to college, I did well in courses where I could write essays. And uh, 
eventually I took a course in, uh, in writing short stories and novels and started thinking about myself as a writer. I particularly did that. I got serious about it <clears throat> when <clears throat> I was 23 years old. Something really momentous happened in my life. I married a woman with high standards. And she expected me to do something with my life. And so <clears throat> I started writing every day. And that's, <clears throat> that's what professional writers do, whether they feel like it or not. Okay, next question. Next question. Okay. Um, were you always a good student? Were you always a good student? <laughs> yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> No, and I'll tell you the truth. <clears throat> I, in, I was a good student up through the fifth grade. And then, I don't know, I just lost interest in school. I was interested in football and working cattle. And, uh, and then I got interested in, in the girls and cars. And I just didn't. Wasn't, wasn't interested in being a good student until I was a senior. And then I kind of decided that I needed to do better because I wanted to go to college. I never was a straight A student in, in high school or college, but um, I think I got a good education. And uh, I guess that uh, whatever education I got, turned out well for what I do, which is writing funny stories. Why did you want to write books? Why did it? Why did I want to write books? Yes. Well, <clears throat> huh. that's a, it's hard to remember. Uh, you know, it didn't, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a cowboy and a rancher and uh, oh, a missionary and a lawyer and a politician, but I never thought about being a writer. And uh, so I didn't uh, ever think much about writing books. I just kind of worked into it slowly. I started writing uh essays in my history classes and then I wrote uh, articles for the school newspaper at the University of Texas and then I took a writing course when I was at Harvard Divinity School and then I started writing on my own every day and <clears throat> I wrote articles and short stories and then <clears throat> worked my way up to writing longer things like novels. <clears throat> And uh, so I've written uh, books on history. I've written biographies, uh, 75 Hank books, and probably 30 or so non-Hank books. I've written four or five books on my experience as a cowboy. And uh, I think they're really good books, but they don't sell many copies. People are not interested in my uh, books on cowboys until I told the same stories through the voice of Hank. And uh, that makes them much more appealing to people who aren't necessarily interested in what cowboys do. <coughs> so I've tried to bring <coughs> all of my knowledge as a cowboy and a rancher <coughs> into these ranch life books. And uh, I think it's turned out pretty well. By the way, <clears throat> we're getting close to time. I want to tell you about this book here. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a big hardback book with a lot of pictures in it. <clears throat> it's called Finding Hank. And I'm not gonna be able to answer all your questions today, 
about the Hank series, and I hope you keep reading them and you, you keep asking questions about them. This book, I wrote it specifically for Hank fans. I get a lot of mail and email from Hank fans who have questions, and I can't always answer those questions. And when I do school programs, I can't answer all the questions. So I wrote this book. I, I tried to answer probably the 50 most often asked questions. And I talk about what I did when I was a kid, what I was thinking about and doing in Perryton, in that little town. Uh, I talk about my college years and uh, my cowboy years and my wife, my family, why I write Hank stories, where I get the ideas for characters like Junior the Buzzard and uh, uh, Wallace the Buzzard and Rip and Snort the Coyote Brothers. And I think you, you will enjoy it and maybe there's a copy of it in your library, I hope so. <clears throat> well, I think we're uh, getting close to being out of time. Now you all promised that if I'd keep writing Hank books, you'd keep reading them. So, all right, get after those ranch ranch life books. That's a good place to start. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining Mr. Erickson and the National Ranching Heritage Center. Don't forget to come out and see us. We're on the campus of Texas Tech and our museums open seven days a week where you can see how cowboys lived and worked um, every day of the year. Thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to end this meeting for everyone and I hope you guys have a happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you.